In the first uh, part of this lecture, I talked to you about the general principles uh, of the allocation methods, and I gave you a kind of quick demonstration of how that might be done. Uh, we're going to now do a more detailed demonstration, and we're going to focus in this lecture on the uh, direct method. But again, we're going to talk really in, uh, at length about both the direct method and step down. We will not talk about the third method uh, that much. Uh, I won't demonstrate it just because of its complexity. So to review, uh, again, direct method, costs of each support department are allocated directly to and only to the patient services departments. So uh, whereas with the step-down method, um, there is a process whereby we share the direct costs of the support departments um, in a progressive step-down manner with some of the other, de step other support departments before those other departments costs are shared to the uh, respective uh, profit center or revenue center uh, sections, which in a hospital would be the, uh, uh, those that generate patient service revenue. Uh, so with the direct method, we're going to take support from, say, the um, housekeeping department, and we're going to send it directly to the supported departments, physical therapy and internal medicine, like we did before. Uh, under step down, we're going to take housekeeping and allocate, we're going to come up with our allocation rate based on the supported support departments, as well as the supported uh, revenue centers. Um, and we're going to step down housekeeping into the support departments increasing the, the follow-on support department's expenses to reflect the support that those departments get from the um, upstream uh, support departments. So we aren't going to really talk about reciprocal um, just because of its complexity, uh, but reciprocal is probably the most accurate because it, it recognizes that not only does housekeeping support HR, but HR supports housekeeping, right? So we go back and forth uh, between the two of them. Um, so which method is most commonly used is is used most commonly in practice? Uh, it depends on the complexity of the organization. But like I mentioned in the prior prior um, uh, uh, lecture, in the military health system, we use a version of of the step down method. So uh, direct method, uh, it considers all the direct allocation costs used at, at uh, this is going to be a nominal Mercy Hospital. Um, and we're going to reduce, so just to make it simple, we're going to just have um, four departments to work with, two support or overhead departments, and two um, patient services departments. So again, you know, it's the idea, you know, the reason that that organizations form and bring together potentially, you know, potentially two different um, uh, types of care is to be able to spread overhead more efficiently. And it's the same reason why you're seeing in the industry now a lot of consolidation of, you know, hospitals and physician practices into systems. Because if, say, a physician practice and a hospital stand alone, they each have to have a full infrastructure support. They have to have um, finance, they have to have HR, right? if, it, if they're complex organizations. If those two organizations come together, they're able to share uh, and reduce, they're able to reduce their overhead uh, and share, say, an HR department between a physician practice and a hospital. Or, you know, you know in a multi-hospital system, um, you might be able to share uh, HR and not have to have, uh, and you might be able to eliminate some redundancy when you bring the two organizations together. Billing is a really great example, right? Billing doesn't necessarily have to be done uh, uh, at any one particular facility. Uh, it can be done offsite and be done for multiple facilities. So, in this, but in this example, we're talking about kind of clinics that have been brought together under one umbrella um, uh, organization 
And that organization provides facility services. So we can think of like housekeeping and general administration. So we're kind of lumping together here under general administration, you know, everything from HR to um, uh, finance to strategy and so forth. Okay, so we're going to illustrate the direct method. And uh, so our first step, you know, is we've got to think about what are the cost pools? Well, we know what the cost pools are going to be. They're going to be facilities, services, and general administration. Um, and then we need to, so that's our step one. Our step two is uh, to figure out our cost drivers. So that's always the, this kind of process for either of the, um, uh, of the methods that we're going to practice here is first identify the cost pool, second identify the cost driver, third identify uh, the, the uh, allocation rate, and then finally determine the amount allocated. So for facility services cost pool, we're going to allocate facility services by the amount of space used by each patient services department. And then for the cost driver for general administration is going to be the amount of revenue generated by each patient services department. Um, and so, you know, we had thought about uh, previously, like what makes a good um, cost driver, right? And, and you want something that is fair um, and something that empowers management um, to try to engage in cost saving measures. So one question, you know, to ask yourself immediately is, are these good cost drivers? Well, you know, I'm going to come back to that uh, at the end of this demonstration and we'll talk a little bit about it, but I'd like you to think about that as we work through uh, the next couple of slides. Okay. So here on, on um, the, uh, on this slide, we see, uh, projected revenues uh, for the patient services departments. So routine care, we're expecting this year for them to make $22 million in revenue, critical care, 5 million. So the organization is going to bring in $27 million in revenue. And remember, these, the patient services departments are the departments that generate the revenue for the organization. So that's all of the revenue that, that's going to be generated for the organization. Uh, the the facilities services and general administrations departments uh, do not uh, generate revenue, right? So those are our cost centers, uh, the routine care and critical care. Those are our revenue centers or profit centers. Okay. So um, patient services departments have, you know, generate revenue, but they also have direct costs, right? And so what's a direct cost again, so that we can imagine um, for routine care would be any, any, human resources costs, so any salaries and wages that are clearly um, uh, employed by routine care. Um, so if you've, got a, if you've got front desk clerks that work in the routine care department, um, those, those clerks' uh, expenses are direct costs to routine care. Other examples, of course, would be supplies. Um, maybe if you lease equipment that's used only in routine care, that would be an appropriate uh, a direct cost because it's only used in routine care. And if routine care went away, you wouldn't have that um, uh, lease, right? And then critical care. So routine care has 8.3 million in direct costs. And then critical care has 3.3 million in direct costs. And again, with critical care, it'd be the same kind of things like salaries that are, you know, for the nurses that work in critical care, um, salaries for uh, your administrative staff that work in critical care plus supplies that are used to provide the critical care services, equipment that is specifically for uh, critical care. So all those things roll up into direct costs for each of these departments. And so we total that up. And so the total direct costs coming out of the, the revenue uh, centers is 11.6 million. So we've got 27 million in revenues uh, and 11.6 million in costs. But obviously, that's not the full cost of running the organization. Um, so, yes, the departments have direct costs that they incur, you know, within the organization. But then um, they're supported by these other facilities. Uh, excuse me, these other uh, departments within the macro organization, and those are the facility services and general administration departments. Um, 
you know, so this, the facilities would be the, would include say the housekeeping uh, department, right? So our routine care and critical care people, our, our departments don't employ the housekeepers. They're employed, there's a housekeeping contract for Mercy Hospital, right? So these are subordinate organizations within Mercy Hospital, this nominal organization we're playing with. Um, and so Mercy has you know, uh, a central contract for housekeeping that would fall up under or, or, or um, uh, fall under the facility services uh, department or, or facility services directly employs housekeepers and, and then uses those personnel to provide service uh, support to the routine care departments. So the hospital has 8.6 million in facilities costs that are direct costs to the facility services department. And so those would be the um, housekeeping salaries, uh, the housekeeping manager, any you know, cleaning supplies they have, any equipment that they use to provide those services. Um, and then we can imagine, you know, of course, facilities is more robust than just housekeeping. You have the people that take care of your, uh, your, you know, your facility, your, so your maintenance workers, you have your, uh, people who are, um, uh, you know, working to make sure your HVAC works and all that, all those kinds of, um, uh, services that are kind of behind the scenes and patients don't pay any attention to unless something goes wrong. Um, and likewise with general administration. So we have $13.85 million in overhead costs. So when we total up the overhead costs, um, you know, the direct costs for the support departments, along with the direct costs for the patient services departments, we come up with $25,450,000. Uh, $25, and so our overall profit is our revenues minus our expenses is 1.55 million, right? So, um, so uh, we, we need to look now uh, to consider how to start to allocate those overhead costs to our departments because we want to hold the department managers in the routine care and critical care uh, responsible for uh, maximizing the profitability of the organization by, and we, you know, we want them to generate as much revenue as they possibly can while providing those services at as low a cost as possible. So if we're going to allocate um, uh, those, the, co the costs of the support departments, we already said we're going to use cost drivers of square feet for facilities and revenue for um, general administration. So how much of each do we have? Well, we're going to add up the square footage for routine care and critical care, and that totals out to 300,600. Now, what about the square footage of the housekeeping department, right? The housekeeping department has a space where they keep their equipment, right? They keep their supplies, um, their personnel come and check in and, and you know, punch their time cards and the, the housekeeping manager probably has a desk there. And so they've got, it's a real thing. They've got space, um, as does the general, uh, the general administration department uh, is going to have space where the billers work and, the, you know, the, the accounting staff works and the uh, HR people work. So all those people have space too. So why aren't we counting that? Well, um, the reason we're not is because we're doing the direct method, right? And we are going to ignore the um, interrelationships between the support departments for this uh, exercise. And so over here on revenue, of course, um, housekeep uh, or facilities and general administration don't generate any revenue. So uh, we wouldn't expect to see them listed here. Um, so more to the, you know, more to the point of the question is why don't we see the support departments, list, departments listed here? Well, revenue, they don't generate any, so we wouldn't see them anyway, but they definitely have a footprint in the organization. Uh, and we're just going to ignore that because ultimately we want to allocate out the facilities cost as well as the general administration cost. Um, and so, uh, uh, we're going to do, because we're using direct method, um, we're going to ignore uh, the, those interrelationships. Okay, so 
getting into the calculating the allocation rate, right? So we step one, identify the cost pool. So that's going to be facility services and generate and general administration. So those are our cost pools. Step two, identify the um, uh, cost driver. And so we've already identified for facilities, that's going to be square footage. And for um, general administration, it's going to be revenue. So we now are doing step three, calculating the allocation rate. So facility services has a total of 8.6 million in overhead costs that have to be allocated across the 300,600 square feet um, of space in the hospital that's occupied by our revenue centers. So we take 8.6 million, divide it by in, in direct costs, divide that by the 300,600 square feet, and we get $28.61 per square foot. So this is the allocation rate for facility services. So when we go to calculate the allocation amount, we're going to take $28.61 per square foot and multiply it by the number of square feet that each of our revenue centers occupies. And that's the amount of the 8.6 million that will be allocated to the respective uh, revenue centers. Likewise with general administration. General administration's cost pool is 5.25 uh, million. And we've decided that it's going to be allocated through revenue. And so the total revenue is 27 million. So we're going to take the 5.25 million in total general administration costs and divide it by the 27 million in revenue. Now, I, I want to highlight again, I said this in the last lecture, but I want to highlight it again. A lot of my students make the mistake of I'm really focused on calculating the um, uh, general administration cost for, say, the uh, routine care division uh, or department. And so instead of putting uh, the whole $27 million in uh, the denominator, they just, uh, which represents the whole organization's revenue, they take instead um, just the uh, routine cares uh, revenue. And when they when they put 5.25 million, which is the overhead cost for the whole organization and divide it by just routine care, they wind up with too high of a um, allocation rate. Um, so remember what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find out the allocation rate for, the, for all of the revenue centers. And so um, we're gonna put all of the revenue centers in the denominator not just the revenue center, maybe that if we're only interested in one of the revenue centers, we don't want to just put that revenue center's uh, cost driver in the denominator. So when we do that, we come up with 19 cents, 19.4 uh, cents uh, in uh, general administration cost allocated to the revenue centers for each dollar of revenue that they generate. Okay, so we've done uh, finding the cost pool, that was step one. We've done finding the um, uh, cost driver, that was step two. We've done finding the allocation rate, that was step three. And now final step, step four, is finding the allocation amount. Okay, so to find the actual allocation amount for facility services to routine care, we're going to take the allocation rate uh, that we determined for the whole organization, right? And notice that it's the same allocation rate for critical care. They both get the same allocation rate, but we multiply it. So this is $28.61 uh, $28 per square foot. So we take the $28.61 per square foot and multiply it by the 261,000 square foot footprint that um, routine care has. And we, that helps us to determine that routine care will get seven point, almost 7.5 million uh, of the 8.6 million that we spend, that the organization Mercy Hospital spends on facility services. The remainder, which is the 2861 times the 39,600 square feet footprint of the critical care department generates a roughly 1.1 million dollar bill. So 7.5 million goes, roughly 7.5 million of facility services goes to routine care. 1.1 million winds up going to critical care. And if you total these up, they should add back up to the total 
direct cost of facilities of the facility services. Okay. Now from general administration, same process, but we're using the allocation rate that we determined previously. And again, remember, they're going to be the same um, because we determined an organization level allocation rate, but we're going to multiply it by the uh, driver that's specific to each department. So, um, or the driver amount that's specific to each department. So we have routine care earned $22 million in revenue this year. So they're going to take $22 million in revenue times 19 cents uh, in general administration expense per dollar of uh, revenue. And that gives us four point, almost $4.3 million uh, being allocated to routine care. Same step here for critical care. They earned $5 million in revenues. And so we take the $5 million times the $0.194 uh, uh, dollars per um, dollar of revenue. And that gives us almost a million, 972. If you add those two together, they always should add back up to the total amount for general administration. So that's 5.25. So let's bring it all together now. So um, for routine care, uh, they had revenues of 22 million and direct costs of 8.3 million. So their profit um, prior to getting their uh, uh, allocation of overhead is 13.7 million. So their um, uh, margin is 62.3% right, uh, on uh, direct costs. However, um, obviously they can't function if they don't have the support of the facility services department, right? How long can routine care run if nobody comes and picks up the trash or sweeps the floor at night? Um, and so they get their fair allocation or what we think is their fair allocation, right? And remember it was based on square footage. So they have a bigger footprint than critical care does. And so they get seven, almost 7.5 million in facilities support. And then likewise, general administration, which was based on uh, the amount of revenue that they bring in is almost 4.3 million. So you add that together, right? Those two costs together, subtract it from the 13.7 million that they had earned uh, after paying their own direct costs. And you wind up with a profit of almost 2 million, 1.9 and some change here, which is an 8.8% margin um, on, on revenue. Um, so to get the 8.8% uh, margin, what you want to do is take the 1.95 and some change million here of profit and divide it by uh, revenues. And so that tells you they're getting an 8.8% margin. So if you do 1.955156 divided by 22 million, you'll get 8.8%. Uh, which is a significant reduction from the, you know, starting uh, margin of 62.3%. Uh, coming down to critical care, they earn $5 million. Uh, they have $3.3 million in direct costs. So that's going to be all their staff that's employed directly in the critical care unit. Uh, and they're, so, as well as the supplies they use and, and, and other things that are specific to critical care and aren't used anywhere else in the organization. And then, um, and that gets you 1.7 million. So they can have a 34% margin, which isn't as nice as the routine care, but um, still a pretty generous margin. But then we allocate to critical care, their fair share of the facility services, as well as general administration. Um, and once we do that, they actually have a loss, right? They have a negative uh, 405, right? So they're losing 405,000 on their 5 million, and that gives them a, a negative 8.1% margin. So uh, critical care starts out looking profitable, but once you act, allocate in um, the overhead that they're getting from the macro organization, which is this nominal Mercy Hospital, um, they actually lose money. And you say, well, it's not fair, right? They're, you know, we're, we're making a profit. We make 1.7 million. Um, uh, so, um, but you can't actually run a critical care unit without 
the support of facility services and general administration. This kind of reminds me of a, a story. Um, when I was in the military, uh, you know, a young uh, lieutenant, uh, I worked in a, in a support, um, uh, uh, a support uh, a unit that provided um, support to a tank, uh, uh, well, it was a, a cavalry squadron. And, um, and I worked in the support troop, which was a, what is a, a you know, squadron is the macro organization. And, and then it had um, a tank, these tank troops, there were multiple tank troops. And then we provided, the support troop provided um, things like medical support, mechanics. We provided their fuel and ammunition. We provided um, their uh, uh, food and all the other kind of things that they needed to be able to function in the field. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of times the tankers being, you know, big bravo, bravado kind of guys would be kind of like, oh, well, you're just in the, you know, in the support, support uh, uh, troop, you don't, you know, you're not a, you know, you're not that important. And um, I remember my commander uh, 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 started putting on all of his presentations and, and uh, made, made a motto uh, for the support troop being uh, try fighting without us. Um, with the idea that, you know, a tank can only drive so far before it runs out of fuel. You know, if it doesn't have ammunition, it's just a big heavy thing driving around on the battlefield. And so, um, you know, uh, it, in reality, none of these, de none of these um, departments can function. You know, this is where the, you know, the fun, interesting part of healthcare is, of course, uh, that everybody, you know, the patients think about. But you can't provide uh, high quality health care if you don't have uh, the services, the support services that are provided uh, usually by the macro organization, including the facilities and general administration. Uh, so there has to be some way uh, to allocate those costs down to the revenue centers. And, and we're using this to determine, you know, are these departments actually profitable? Uh, you know, should we look at how to make them more efficient or maybe even eliminate them if they, you know, if they're too costly to the overall organization? So suppose, suppose you're the critical care department head at Mercy Hospital. Your bonus is dependent on a good financial performance. Uh, what would be your reaction to the allocation results? Well, you know, I mean, uh, as I was just saying, I think if I was a critical care manager, I'd be like, hey, this isn't fair. You know, I don't want all those expenses. You know, you've got, uh, you know, you're spending too much on, on housekeeping. You're spending too much on, you know, all those administrators uh, up at, uh, you know, up at the headquarters. Um, but more importantly, I think, you know, we ought to think about the, the drivers that were selected, uh, you know, so square footage. Does critical care? Does the critical care manager actually have any influence over square footage? And the answer is probably no. You know, um, and so the critical care manager, because he or she doesn't have uh, any influence over uh, square footage, um, isn't going to be able to take any steps to reduce uh, the facility's cost for his or her organization. And likewise, uh, actually, well, uh, kind of perversely, if you will, uh, because the general administration bill to critical care is based on revenue, the only way that the critical care manager can reduce his or her general administration bill is to actually reduce revenue, which is, you know, uh, not at all what we want them to do. So my argument here would be, you know, if you're if your intention um, is to try to motivate your department uh, administrators to be good stewards of resources, um, you uh, by choosing those allocation um, uh, or, or cost drivers, you are kind of limiting them in terms of, of what they can do uh, to try to improve the performance of their organization. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for part two of this lecture, and I'll resume part three, um, and we'll, we'll talk about the step-down method in a little more detail.